it's an incredible substance designed for the economy. It is the worst substance possible for the environment. Why has plastic caused so much pollution and death? Many people now are concerned about things like plastic pollution in the ocean and the harmful effects of plastic on the environment. Plastic has caused major problems, including the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. Plastic isn't all bad, though. The invention of plastics has broken many material, social, economic, lifestyle, technological, and scientific barriers. We need to look deeper at plastic's history to understand the barriers that plastic has broken and where it leaves our world. In the mid-1800s, ivory was a very popular material. It had been for decades. There were ivory combs, ivory billiard balls, ivory piano keys, and ivory jewelry. The main source of ivory was elephant tusks, but there were only so many elephants in the world. Elephants started to die out. The world needed a replacement. A billiard ball company in New York became desperate enough that they offered a $10,000 reward for anyone who could make a material that could replace ivory in billiard balls. $10,000 in 1867 is equivalent to over $300,000 in 2020. A man named John Wesley Hyatt decided the money was worth it. He got to work in his laboratory, as he called it, a small shed in his backyard. He worked for over two years on a material and eventually came up with celluloid, as he called it. He had mixed nitric acid, cotton, camphor, and alcohol under heat and pressure in just the right way to get a material that could be molded into any shape or size. It could then be cooled into a hard substance that couldn't easily be broken. When Hyatt tried to make celluloid into billiard balls, it didn't work as well as he had planned. This new material was extremely flammable, and the balls made a loud cracking noise whenever they hit each other. Also, if you hit a ball too hard against another ball, it would cause them to explode. This caused celluloid billiard balls to be largely disliked. One bar owner even told a story about how whenever a celluloid billiard ball hit another, all the men in the bar would pull a gun. So he switched to ivory billiard balls again. Celluloid was obviously not the right material for an ivory replacement, but there was a different use for it. It could be used for photographic and cinematic film. The first film invented by Thomas Edison and Edward Muybridge was partly made from celluloid. It was one of the few materials in its time that could be molded into any shape, including film strips, and it was cheap. All film until the 1920s would then be made from celluloid. John Wesley Hyatt's celluloid would be the first plastic to break barriers, and would eventually lead to the modern plastic world that we live in today. Though celluloid was a notable achievement in the world of plastics, thermoplastics were cheaper, easier to make, and more reliable. Thermoplastics are plastics made from very high heat and pressure, which makes it so they aren't flammable and they won't melt under high temperatures. The first thermoplastic was made in 1907 by Belgian chemist Leo Bakeland. He called his thermoplastic Bakelite. Bakelite, unlike celluloid, was completely synthetic. It was made from phenol, also known as carbolic acid, and formaldehyde, a preservative for dead animals to keep them from biodegrading. Bakelite became a material of a thousand uses, as its logo including an infinity symbol represents. It could be used in jewelry, it could be used in a telephone, it could be used in a guitar. Unlike celluloid, Bakelite in a billiard ball wouldn't explode if you hit a ball too hard. Bakelite wasn't even flammable, it could replace almost any material in any way. This material would set the precedent for much greater things to come. Bakelite soon became popular. Factories started to produce it, and people started to buy it. From many raw materials are now manufactured an infinite variety of primary resinoids covering a wide range of special characteristics and properties. These, alone or in combination with numerous fillers and solvents, make up the more than 2,000 different Bakelite materials. Plastic and synthetic polymers soon were everywhere, especially when polyethylene and polypropylene were invented. Polyethylene was invented in 1933 in Great Britain, and polypropylene was invented in 1951. These led to many more plastic inventions, and even more things being made from plastic. Plastic was in polyester. Plastic was in wiring. Plastic was in paint. Plastic was in cars. The invention of the cell phone wouldn't have been possible without plastic. 
plastic had forever changed the course of history. And why were all these things made from plastic? No other material can do the things that plastic can do. It can withstand force similar to what steel can, but it isn't nearly as heavy as steel. Plastic is an, ele an electrical insulator, allowing wires to be handled easily without risk of electrocution. Plastic is waterproof. Plastic can be stretched into th thin sheets to create things like fabric and plastic wrap. Though plastic broke many barriers in these ways, it would not have become popular without breaking one other barrier. Plastic is cheap and easy to produce. Following World War II, it was produced in massive quantities. Plastic started to permeate all aspects of industry, consumer living, and business. It started to leave a permanent mark on the world, but not always in ways people were expecting. Plastics. Materials devised by the mind of man. Simple chemicals from coal, oil, cotton, water, air, reacted together, built up atom by atom into substances entirely new. In 1997, Captain Charles J. Moore was returning home to California from a sailing race in Hawaii when he saw that his ship was going through an unusual amount of plastic. Almost nobody went through that patch of ocean, because the currents create a dead zone where there is no wind. Captain Moore thought it was very strange that there would be so much plastic all floating in this one spot. He said later about the experience, as I gazed from the deck at the surface of what ought to have been a pristine ocean, I was confronted, as far as the eye could see, with the sight of plastic. It seemed unbelievable, but I never found a clear spot. In the week it took to cross the subtropical high, no matter what time of day I looked, plastic debris was floating everywhere. Bottles, bottle caps, wrappers, fragments. One of his colleagues, an oceanographer, dubbed the phenomenon the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. Plastic had created this garbage patch. Plastic was killing marine life in the garbage patch. Plastic was threatening ecosystems to the brink of extinction. Though plastic broke many barriers, it also created countless tons of pollution. People were now realizing that the very thing that made plastic a miracle material was also the thing that made it one of the most problematic materials. Plastic is meant to last a long time. After all, Bakelite was made from fossil fuel, materials formed over millions of years, and formaldehyde, a material meant to make organic things not decompose. Put these two things together and you get a material that would take thousands of years to biodegrade, or might never biodegrade. Lasting a long time now meant being in the ocean for thousands to millions of years. Every Bakelite object ever produced is still around to this day. Plastic had betrayed humankind in the worst way possible. Though plastic broke many barriers, it had also become a barrier to our future. Hope is not yet lost. Mankind today is at a crossroads. We can break this barrier of pollution and death, or we can let our world as we know it be destroyed. From the beginning of Plastic's story and the invention of celluloid, to the discovery of the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, Plastic's history isn't over yet. We are still living the story of Plastic today. Even though Plastic has changed our lives for the better, unless we make a change, then we'll continue to watch our world be overtaken by this plague of Plastic.